Google search GMAT point free tests. Click on the first link. Click on GMAT daily tests. Here you can take short GMAT tests in an exam interface. After submitting your test, you can view detailed solutions. Hello guys, welcome to GMAT point. In this video, we'll see how are your GMAT scores calculated. We know that the GMAT or the Graduate Management Admission Test is one of the most widely taken MBA entrance exams globally and it is a computer adaptive test. In most other competitive exams, the final score can be easily calculated based on the number of correct answers. However, when it comes to the GMAT, aspirants are confused about how uh, are the scores calculated. That is, how does the GMAT calculate your final score which is based on quant and the verbal scores? And your final GMAT score, which ranges from 200 to 800, is not purely correlated to the number of correct answers which you attempt in the GMAT. So in this video, we will give you a clear explanation of how your scores are calculated and that can also help you to interpret your scorecards. All right, now before we start, let me quickly run you through the free resources that we are offering at GMAT point. Do check out these free tests. You can join our Telegram group where you can discuss your queries with your peers and also exam experts. The link to join the Telegram group is provided in the description box below. So do check it out. We are also launching a GMAT course very soon and we'll be informing you very soon and we'll be immediately informing you once it's launched. We'll also be posting this update in our Telegram group. So if you're a part of the group, you can receive all the exam updates immediately. For any other queries regarding the GMAT preparation or the tests that we are offering, feel free to reach out to us at support at the rate gmatpoint.com. You can also WhatsApp or call us on this number 6303239042. Alright, now coming to the topic of today's video, that is how are your GMAT scores calculated. Now to understand this, that is to understand how are your scores calculated, let us quickly look at the GMAT exam pattern. As we know, there are four sections in the GMAT, the quantitative reasoning section with 31 questions, 62 minutes. Verbal reasoning section 36 questions 65 minutes, the IR section 12 questions 30 minutes and the AWA section 1 question 30 minutes. And your overall GMAT score that ranges between 200 and 800 includes only your quantitative and verbal reasoning scores. Also during the exam you cannot skip any question or you cannot go back to any question. And the GMAT score which you receive after your test uh, will be valid for 5 years. And most of the top B schools which accept the GMAT usually require a GMAT score of around 700. You can also check out our GMAT score calculator. So do check out our GMAT score calculator wherein you can get your estimated score based on your quant and your verbal scores. The link to this score calculator is provided in the description box so you can check it out. Alright, now if we look at the scaled scores for each of the four sections of the GMAT, uh, for the analytical writing assessment section, the scaled score is 0 to 6, that is the score ranges from 0 to 6 in 0.5 increments. Next, the integrated reasoning score, the score ranges from 1 to 8 in 1 point increments. Next, we have the verbal section, the score ranges from 6 to 51 and 1 point increments. And finally, we have the quant section, similar to the verbal section, 6 to 51 with 1 point increments. And then we have the total score. As mentioned earlier, your total score uh, includes only your performance in the quant and the verbal sections only. And this ranges from 200 to 800 in 10 point increments. That is nothing but your score, uh, your GMAT score will only be in the multiples of 10 uh, between 200 and 800. And as per the information on the official website, the average GMAT score of the candidates uh, that was calculated for a certain period was 568.21 so this was the average gmat score of all the candidates who have taken the gmat in that period okay now let us look at each of these individual sections first let's look at your aws score so basically in the aws score an argument or case is given and you have to write an essay based on that and the essay is independently scored by a specially designed computer software and by a human expert and then these two scores are taken together and the average of these scores will be your final AWS score. And as mentioned earlier, the scores for the AWS section range from 0 to 6 in half point intervals. And also a human expert gives a third valuation only in the case where, uh, only in the case if the two ratings differ, that is if these two ratings differ by more than one point. So your essay will be evaluated on multiple factors, the quality of your ideas, your ability to organize your thoughts well and express them. It is also evaluated based on the supporting reasons and examples provided 
and also your ability to write in a coherent manner and the experts who evaluate your responses the, uh, your essay are fair while marking these responses so this is how your uh, performance in the AWS section is evaluated and your score is calculated and these are the scores as mentioned they range from 0 to 6 and your score can also be something like 2.5 or 4.5 and so on because these are in 0.5 intervals and this column mentions the percentile as against these scores so for a score of 6 your percentile will be 88 for a score of 0 your percentile will be 0 for a score of 3 your percentile will be 4 and so on also you will be receiving your AWS score along with your official score report and you will be receiving a mail within 2 weeks after you have taken the test and if you look at the mean score uh, for these range of scores so the mean score based on the number of test takers was 4.43 so this was the mean score in the AWS section alright next if you look at the IR section that is the integrated reasoning section the scores range from 1 to 8 in 1 point intervals the IR questions usually contain more than one part and in order to get the points for that question you need to answer all the points uh, all the parts of that question correctly and the students will also receive the GMAT score report that includes their IR score so immediately after taking the GMAT you will be receiving an uh, unofficial score report which also includes your IR scores and this section includes a total of 12 questions and you will be marked depending on the difficulty level of the questions and also depending on the number of uh, questions you answered correctly so these are the various scores and these are the percentiles as against these scores so for 3 18 percentile for a score of 5 48 percentile for a score of 779 and for a score of 8 90 percentile and the mean score for this section was 4.6 now let's move on to the quant and the verbal sections. As mentioned earlier, your total GMAT score, that is your final score that ranges between 200 and 800, includes your performance only in the quant and the verbal sections. The AWA and the IR section scores are not included in your final score. The quant scores and the verbal scores are calculated separately, and these scores in uh, and the scores in both of these sections range from 6 to 51. And you cannot compare these both uh, scores because each section has its percentile distribution and each section should be viewed independently. First, let's take a look at this table. So these are the quant scores. We have included some of the scores ranging from 6 to 51. Uh, 6 is the least score and hence 0 percentile. 51 is the highest with 97 percentile. And these are the other quant scores and their respective percentiles. Similarly, we have the verbal section, least score of 6, 0 percentile. And for the highest score of 51, you'll be having 99 percentile. And both these sections are different. Uh, that means you cannot compare your scaled score in one section uh, with the scaled score in this section. For example, a score of 46 in the verbal section is around 99th percentile. And if we compare this to the quant section, with a score of 46, you'll be only at the 56th percentile. So what this means is that you can also take these uh, percentiles into consideration while considering your task target uh, verbal and your quant score. For most of the aspirants, achieving a score of 41 in the quant section is easier when compared to achieving a score of 46 in the verbal section because uh, clearly we can see that a score of 46 will put you at the 99th percentile. That's because the verbal section on the GMAT is uh, slightly tougher and the similar score you will be only at the 56th percentile in quant. And if we look at the mean score for the verbal section, the mean score was 27.26. Similarly, if you look at the quant section, the mean score was 40.7. So clearly the mean for the verbal section is very less when compared to that of quant. And finally, these are your GMAT scores against their percentiles. Remember that in addition to the raw score, uh, your raw GMAT scores, your scorecard also comes along with a percentile ranking. That is your scorecard also includes the percentiles. And we know that the GMAT score ranges from 200 to 800. This is the least score and hence the least percentile. Similarly, these are some of the other scores, 300, 400, 500, 600, and these are the respective percentiles. For a score of 650, the percentile will be 72. For a score of 700, the percentile is around 88th percentile, 750, 98. And finally, the highest score, the maximum score of 800 is around 99th percentile. And remember that these percentile rankings are calculated for a specific period. For example, the data presented in this table is taken from the official website of the GMAT and this data is calculated for the period uh, which is from Jan 2018 to December 2020. So depending on the test takers in this period, these percentiles are given. So the same score in different years might have a slightly different percentile. The higher the percentile ranking, the more competitive your score is. 
but again don't worry about these percentiles what matters more is uh, how much you score on the gmat this is what is considered by most b schools so focus on maximizing your gmat scores and what is that good gmat score which can fetch you a call from your target b school so basically a good gmat score is something that depends on your target b school your target mba program and also on your profile so depending on these factors uh, a good gmat score for each b school differs usually a good or a decent gmat score is something around 650 or above and this is something in the 72 percentile range but again a score of 700 plus is considered a safe score for many b schools and uh, based on some data the average score for students admitted to the top 50 b schools or the top 50 mba programs in the world uh, was around 660 so this was the average gmat score but again as mentioned to be on the safe side uh, try to score at least 700 or above all right now finally how are these scores calculated so how do you come up with your final gmat score or your scores in the verbal and the quant sections we have discussed some points earlier but uh, these are the major factors uh, based on which your gmat scores are calculated one major factor is the number of questions that you have answered correctly remember that there are 31 questions in the quant section and 36 questions in the verbal section your final gmat score or the gmat score in these individual sections depends on the number of questions that you have answered correctly so the more number of questions you answer correctly the higher your score will be and the other important factor is that the total number of questions you have answered remember that gmat is a computer adaptive test and you cannot uh, skip questions Also you cannot go back to any previous question so it's important that you finish the section and each section of the test needs to be completed which means these 31 questions should be answered within the 62 minutes time frame and it's 36 questions in the 65 minutes time frame so when it comes to quant you will have an uh, average of 2 minutes per question and a little less than 2 minutes for the verbal section and so remember that there is a penalty for not completing these sections and hence it's important that you finish these sections let's say you're in the middle of quant section and you're stuck on a problem so you should not be wasting too much time on the problem if you are spending an unreasonable amount of time make sure you mark something and move on to the next question and how much penalty you will be receiving for not completing a particular section is not uh, exactly disclosed by the gmat but uh, there will be a penalty if you don't complete these sections so this is one of the important factor the total number of questions you answered and finally the other important factor is that the difficulty of the questions answered so as the gmat is a computer adaptive test this is how it works so when you start uh, taking the test the first question will be of a medium difficulty level and if you answered the first question correctly the next question will be slightly on the higher difficulty level on the other hand if you answer your first question incorrectly so you have answered your first question incorrectly your uh, next question will be slightly easier uh and let's say you answered this question also correctly that is a higher uh, that is a question of higher difficulty level then your overall score will also go up and let's say you answered the first question incorrectly and you move to a easier question your score will be slightly lesser and let's say you answered this uh, the easier question also incorrectly your score will be even less but again let's say you got to an easier question if you answer this correctly you will again scale up and you can go to a slightly tougher question and if you answer those questions correctly your score will be increasing so briefly this is how the scoring system works and so remember that your overall score uh, which ranges from 200 to 800 not only depends on the number of questions answered correctly it also depends on the total number of questions and also the difficulty of the questions that you answered so if you answer more questions correctly and if you qualify for questions of higher difficulty level your score also will be higher and this is how your gmat scores are calculated we hope that you found this video to be informative please do like this video share and subscribe to our channel it'll encourage us to come up with more such important videos if you have any other doubts please put them in the comment section below we'll try to address as many of them as possible thank you so much do check out our b school call predictor enter your details to know your chances of getting calls from top indian and international b schools that accept a gmat score